everyone. My name is Chad Van Handel. I'm the Chief Lending Officer at Unison Credit Union. Welcome to another episode of the Utah Podcast Real Estate Edition. Today, we're very excited to have Justin Springer in the studio. Justin got started in 2007. Uh, very excited story to, to talk about how Justin got into it. And he's, he's been able to build his portfolio over the years. Um, beyond that, he's also on the board of NeighborWork. So that's another thing we're going to touch on in today's episode. So without further ado, let's welcome Justin to the studio. Thanks, Chad. Appreciate you having me. Hey, we're excited to have you. So uh, I think the best place to start is just, you know, where did the real estate bug come from and, and how did you get your start? Uh, my dad was a, he was a really, really good entrepreneur. He actually uh, almost kind of had the rich dad, poor dad type of story. Mm -hmm. At 35, he was, uh, he was working for uh, for another business in a management position. He bought one gas station, and uh, he ended up having 13 gas stations, uh, a couple of restaurants. Oh, wow. <laughs> he was a really good entrepreneur. He's uh, he, he's still he's retired now, but he's a really sharp guy. He uh, actively involved in the community, and he's still doing that. So he. Uh, he got me started. He actually got me the Rich Dad Poor Dad book. Uh, out of all people, I had uh, the opportunity to learn right away, but I, I actually went to work for somebody to start okay. with and didn't do didn't do uh, the entrepreneurial road to start with and uh, ended up, uh, I started in college, uh, landscape and a lawn service, did that for a while and that uh, that morphed. He always had uh, residential rental okay, great. in his portfolio great. and still does to this day. Uh, counts on it as part of his retirement. So, so when, yeah, when did you get the real, uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad book? Was that high school or just probably, after high probably, school? Yeah, probably late high school. Okay. Right. Read the book and set it down. I, I thought, put, yeah, I, put the seed in your mind. And, thought and, it was good, but I didn't, <laughs> I didn't take as much action. You know, I, um, I don't regret it, but uh, just took a little bit. Sure, sure. So the landscape business through college, you yep, said? Yep, I lived then... in Lake Geneva. I went to Whitewater. Uh, after that, I moved to Chicago to work for somebody else. Decided that, you know, the big city life wasn't for me mm -hmm. and uh, moved back home. Wanted to be closer to family and friends. And I had mentioned to you when we were getting started after that, I, um, with the experience in the landscape and lawn service, I started doing property preservation right around 2007, uh, 2008. There was obviously a crazy market, right. lots of foreclosures. So when the, a bank or a lending institution would foreclose, we would go in, change the locks, maintain the place, uh, you know, doing different projects. That morphed into a program uh, through Bank of America that was called Rehab to Rent, where they uh, they would give a scope of work. I would bid out the scope of work and then uh, made the repairs, and they they were renting them out. And figured, why not do this for myself? So, so the, the type of work that you were doing in Chicago was that related or different? No, it was unrelated. Okay. Uh, I worked for a, a street sweeping company that supplemented I dot and C dot. Uh, I lived on the north side of Chicago, worked <laughs> on the south side. I got a million good stories about that. Um, it was fun times, but the traffic was horrible. Uh -huh. It was expensive. I drove a uh, a one-ton diesel in the city, uh, circling, <laughs> circling the wow, park good, every single night. It was, it, was, uh, it was a lot. But. <laughs> so, so then, uh, was was the, land, the the preservation company? Was that on the side of something, or was that you just struck out to be an entrepreneur and moved? Ran with uh, it? I dated a traveling nurse for a while, so that was interesting. Okay. <laughs> lived uh, lived around a couple of different states for a while, and it was fun. And during that time, is actually kind of when I got the real estate bug. Started doing some research into uh, short sales sure. it was the first the first kind of foray into it but it was tough it was tough to put it all together and especially from a distance um, yeah so moved back home still interested in real estate I house hacked uh, for a little bit okay. I, I bought one unit that was it was a three unit lived in one of the three nice. fixed the other two up rented them out and uh, rinse and repeat so this was 2007 then when you bought that first yes, property yep. okay and, and was that an MLS property that one was listed on the okay. MLS um, I, I would be I I guess I don't know what the percentage is, but the majority of the properties we own have been on the MLS, and I've done a ton of marketing, but uh, especially in the later years, a cash offer sure. and um, you know no contingencies, that's done as well. Sure. And and did you know going in on this property, was there work to be done? Were there existing tenants? or how, how to... Lots of work to do, mm -hmm. and uh, so I fixed up my unit to live in first, mm -hmm. uh, fixed up the other two very quickly afterwards mm -hmm. to get them up and rented out. And um, then after that, uh, 
living in the multifamilies, and it's not bad. You know, it wasn't bad, and we've got quite a few multifamilies. But uh, we fixed up a single family then, lived in that, and then continued to. Uh, I would always have the same recipe. I'd fix up the bedroom, really? the bathroom, get them going, cooking on a hot plate, and uh, and then after it was ready to rent, I'd move out onto the next. Wow. So so you still own the three unit? That That's one of the ones I've sold. Actually, okay. if uh, in the main idea of what we're all doing, buy low, mm -hmm. sell high. Mm -hmm. uh, we sold a couple in the past couple. Uh, past two years or so okay. and I did sell that one uh, to one of my tenants there was we did a lot of repairs on it there was still a little bit of work needed mm -hmm. you know he gave me what I considered a full price sure. offer and um, I, you know throughout my whole portfolio was one of the one of the lower end ones sure. so mm -hmm. um, so was there any I mean was it a little sentimental to get rid of that that property kind of being I drive past it all the time <laughs> he hasn't uh, the new owner I believe still lives there hasn't uh, made much for repairs but it looks like he's doing the same thing uh, you know renting it out and good. seems good. to be providing him good service good where, where did the the construction so I mean I, I think you do a lot of the construction on your properties I mean where did that where did that come from I mean was that something that you learned growing up or, or did you pick that up kind of after the fact I I've always been kind of a handy guy, a lot of it as I went. Um, you know, for years I would hire other third parties. Uh, right now, one of my best friends is a master plumber, another one of my friends is an electrician, so it's great, great but I'll mm -hmm. still. Even to this day, I'll still hold the flashlight sometimes, or the only times I really get excited about going to work is to work with my friends. Sure, uh, sure. <laughs> just keeping an eye out, learning how to do stuff, um, you know, more tools in my tool belt. Sure. And uh, it really has helped out too as far as assessing properties right. and um, doing the, the rehab to rent where they gave a scope of work. It was an excellent framework for, hey, what needs to right, be done right. at a rental property. Mm -hmm. It was basically like, okay, I've got exactly what I need. So now when I'm doing my inspections, I know exactly what I'm looking sure. for as I'm going through through any type of property. Yeah, I can imagine Bank of America in 2007, 2008 probably wasn't putting in, you know, the top of the notch kind of fixtures and flooring and things like that. They, they actually probably... did. They oh, actually really? did. I, you know more about it than I do, uh, but I believe the rental portion of it was maybe a way to restructure really? some okay. of it on their book. Right. The, they certainly weren't, you know, weren't putting in gold color toilets yeah. or anything like that, but uh, some of them they were doing a little bit nicer, renting them out, and then I'm guessing, you know, reselling them at some point in the future. Sure, sure. So uh, those first properties were probably in your personal name, obviously, because they were they were your your residences. So at what point did you kind of did they ever ever get flipped to an LLC, or are they still sitting in your personal name right now? I've got just a very few that I haven't done much. A couple that I lived in, and then actually took out a, sure. a residential type loan product on them. Uh, those are still in my personal name. Otherwise, most of it in an LLC. Okay. All right. Great. Um, any, I mean, any, ch did you have any challenges kind of on the financing side, kind of getting started or, or just maybe when you were just getting started, kind of what, what were, did you have any challenges kind of getting financing or how did you go about that? Really been uh, a, a paradigm shift in the mm -hmm. way that it's been when I first started. I, I, there was, this was true for most people, I'm sure investing around that time, there was deals falling into people's laps, right. including mine could have been. But I, I uh, recently out of college, I had mediocre credit, and and um, back then, again, something you're more familiar with, um, having rental income. Right. You know, you to the to the banker, you want to make it look like you <laughs> are making the most. To the tax man, you want to you know try to use all all that's available from the universe. Sure. So uh, it was very tough. It was tough to finance stuff. A lot of sweat equity. I would say my real estate investing career was shaped like a hockey stick where you know, I, it was a, a yeah, slow burn to start with in the last five years or so have, have really been an inflection point. Well, good, I mean, good for you, I mean, to, to be in it as long as you've been in, I mean, and to, to have seen the 07, 08, 09 market, I mean, you, you kind of know what things could be. You've seen probably the excesses. So, uh, you know, again, you've probably got that, that more structured, you know, you, you can be, you can feel better about the properties. You, you've seen the bad stuff. So you, you can, you know, you don't, you're not going to get yourself over leveraged probably is, is what I'm trying to say there. So that's something that we're huge, mm -hmm. huge into. We're very under levered. Some people would argue that maybe that's a little bit of equity sitting on the sideline. Right now, we've got a good availability with our own cash and, and with our lending partners, mm -hmm. where that's not necessarily sure. an issue. And uh, I would rather I would rather be under levered. Our debt service is low. We're you know we've been able to increase rents and and experience appreciation mm -hmm. with the low debt service. It really uh, it's hitting on all cylinders. Mm -hmm. 
you want to talk about maybe your structure? I think you've got a couple different LLCs right now. Do you want to talk maybe, or, or how many how many total units, to put you on the spot a little bit, how many total units are you guys kind of managing right now? Yeah, we're, um, so it's my fiance and I. Um, before we met, she actually had some rentals okay. too. She's originally from France. She's oh, got a really great story too. <laughs> uh, got here through Kimberly Clark and uh, Kimberly Clark International. Started doing real estate as well and uh, blossomed for her. Hello. We've got uh, a little under 60 units. We sold a couple. So okay, nice. We're, we're a scattered site portfolio, lots of single families, uh, some duplexes. We got a, a little bit of mixed use. There's commercial on the bottom okay. and residential on top. Nice. Um, Let's talk, yeah, let's talk about the mixed use one a little bit. How, how did you get into that, one of those projects? And... I'll, I'll circle back to, yeah. to, the, uh, to the LLCs. Okay, yeah. And, um, the mixed use one came about. Uh, um, it uh, it was on the MLS, and I'm always looking for a good deal. Mm -hmm. Seemed like it was in a good deal. It's in a it's in a floodplain, okay. but um, I think that there's not that great of likelihood that it's going to flood. Sure, I've got flood insurance sure. on it, um, and it's it's basically uh, there's four commercial units on the bottom, five residential units total. And uh, it's got good space for, uh, we rent a camper I had mentioned to you yep, before, yep. and I keep that behind there, and I've got my <laughs> office there too, so. So yeah, we're concerned about kind of that other, obviously the residential, you've got kind of the standard tenants, but then with the commercial, you, you have a little bit of a additional risk with, you know, what business are they in? Is their business gonna be, you know, recession proof, COVID proof, things like that? Was that, was that concerning at all to you, kind of going through that process? No doubt about mm -hmm. it. I, I bought the building from from one of the tenants right okay. now uh, and actually did it with creative financing. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I gave them a large down payment and then uh, they made a loan for the balance of it okay. and then, you know, with the term and uh, uh, now I've refinanced since after we've made all the repairs, mm -hmm. but uh, she's still still my tenant to this day. Oh, okay, good. Do you, what are the other commercial? What types of businesses are the other? A other salon, companies? a massage therapist. Okay. And uh, like I said, I've got my office in one of them. Did it get? Did you have that through 2020? Did, did yes. Or did you have concerns then, kind of through 2020, or did you have to have discussions with the tenants, or were they able to? No, knock on wood, we okay. uh, we came out reasonably unscathed. We you know we had some people pay us late. Mm -hmm. uh, we were obviously as everyone needed to be. We were fair and. Mm -hmm. And as flexible as possible. Sure. Um, you know, if somebody's behind on payments, as long as there's a plan in place and they're making an effort, we were we were willing to, like I said, be fair and flexible. Good. Patient. Good. You, you had mentioned yeah. about uh, the structure of LLCs, yep. or, or and then you had asked people in the past too their opinion on that. And I've kind of got my own mm -hmm. as far as a liability standpoint. You know, and then a tax savings. Yeah. Those are the kind of the two the two weighing machines, and and I think that insurance is a big part of it. Having a good insurance agent. Um, if you if you have leverage on your property, if you have a loan, that's a great way too. You know, if you're if you own the place in cash and you get sued, obviously right. they're going to look to that. You know, if you've got, you know, if it's worth a hundred thousand, you own ninety five. They're not going to look at it as close as something. Mm -hmm. um, so, anyways, uh, with a, we 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 don't have every rental property in a separate LLC, but we've got groups of them for yep. for different types: single families, duplexes. For some of our commercial buildings, the uh, an eight unit is in a separate LLC. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. So yeah, so I mean, you don't have a, a specific rule in terms of how many properties or, or what size of value, it's just kind of, you know, wh where things kind of fit. Yeah, I, yeah, exactly. Where mm -hmm. things kind of fit the makeup and then also making sure to have good insurance on the properties right. and, and, uh, and then all of them we have we have some type of loan on. Yeah, because again, I'm, I'm certainly not an expert, and, and uh, so again, get your own uh, research, but I've heard that if, if you have a big enough, if, if they're in your personal name, you've got a big enough kind of umbrella on that, that you know, you've got some protections that you may not need the LLC, but uh, but again, it's certainly everybody's situation is different, and um, you know, if you can get to that spot where you can put it in that LLC just to have that that other layer of separation, I think I mean From seems a, to make sense in it, a lot of it cases. It does make right? sense. It can help too, keeping things separate for bookkeeping and, and. But it does, you know, again, from a financing standpoint, it it, it it may have some ramifications. So that's where you have to kind of weigh what's the best way to do it. We've had some people that have house hacked that you know got to a good point where they could refinance the property and then you know they did a quick claim deed to their LLC and were able to kind of get it into a, a separate holding company and out of their personal name at that point. But again, everybody. As far as getting started, keeping it in your own name and getting a, a, a you know a traditional type loan product on it, mm -hmm. you know, is is a great great way to do it. We've been talking a couple times in the last couple episodes about house hacking, and like I said, so so you know the, the good and the bad. You've got your tenants, you know, close. You can see them, but you've also you know you're living next to your tenants. I mean, how, how did that process? Go for you. I mean, were they knocking on your door at you know midnight? Hey, my, my toilet doesn't work, or uh, did you get any of those situations? No doubt about it. <laughs> um, I, it, 
like I said, that's why uh, yeah. single single family living is good. I think um, you know one thing um, one thing that really stood out to me is is how we're conducting ourselves. You know, not that I'm having all my tenants over for Thanksgiving, yep. but you know they know who I am. Right. Uh, I, if if there's if there's things that need you know maintenance that needs to be done, mm -hmm. we're you know we want to receive the rent, so we're also looking you know and provide some value to them. We sure. also want to be paid rent on time, mm -hmm. following the rules of the lease. So we're we're big you know we're Becky by the book as far as paperwork is concerned. Sure. Um, you know, I'm usually usually open-minded. Uh, people are calling me late at nighttime, or you know, in an, a non-rental emergency situation, uh, you know, not acceptable or come into my house. But uh, you know, it was it was at the beginning, it wasn't that bad, mm -hmm. just because you know, I, I, and and very much so happy to have somebody paying you know paying for for my mortgage. Sure, right, right. So you said yeah. you said about 60 units right now. Is that what you said? I think uh, 57, okay. something like and that. And so, are are you guys you're self managing all of the properties, or how? how We're self managing. Right now? I wanted to mention before when we were talking, mm -hmm. you know, I think that uh, a, a great, uh, a lot of people, there's a lot of different ways to do mm -hmm. real estate. It's kind of an art and a science. Yep. So some people say, hey, you should never be swinging the hammer. Some people mm -hmm. say you should, you know, only get a property management company. Right. There's argument both ways. Mm -hmm. I've tried property management companies, some good ones. We had some successes, you know, if, if, you're managing a thousand properties. You have a couple of units open. You know uh, who's going to work harder right. to fill those units? Me knowing I need to have my two units filled, or you knowing that you've got multiple other people. And and again, many good property management yep. companies. Um, but we we decided. So we we lean really heavy into doing the capital repairs up front. Yep. So one of my best friends is a master plumber. One of you know everybody says tenants and toilets. So we try to take out the toilets <laughs> part of it. Um, all of our places are in, in good service somewhere that we would want to live ourselves and um, eliminating that portion of it and really front end loading uh, all the repairs, right. making sure that they're very serviceable, providing safe units. Sure. You know, um, that's that's our goal. But so through Jessica's Goods and Services, my fiance, she set up uh, our own tenant portal. Okay. There's 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 a ton you know there's a ton of um, of management software that you can right, use too. Right. Some of it, in my opinion, uh, is extremely useful. It's uh, as I mentioned, I'm not really a too tech savvy <laughs> of a guy. Some of it is similar to QuickBooks, where you could you know use a four year degree. You could really get a bird's eye view of your business and how it's going to, and and any of the you know the acronyms right. as far as how you measure how you measure how you're doing. It's useful information too. But we've kind of developed our own our own management system. We've got a tenant portal where they can pay, do maintenance requests, fill out applications as we have new places come available. Uh, we've kind of streamlined what we're doing. So yeah, um, I, I think I'd mentioned to you Ed, that we're. We're kind of taking a step back mm -hmm. with uh, with with the uh, conditions in the market. It seems like some of the housing prices have gone up. Still, some deals to be had. You know, I still believe there's opportunities. Just depends where you're looking. Mm -hmm. But um, we've gone through and really, really fine-tuned our machine too, from the management sure. standpoint, mm -hmm. making sure that we can uh, provide good management, uh, but that we're not, you know, we're not wasting as much. I think I'd mentioned to you. You know, we've gone through and. Um, We've experienced appreciation. We've right. uh, been able to raise some some rents to market rents insurance. We had yep. talked about. Yep. Um, we've combed through our insurance to make sure that we've got the great coverage and seeing you know, hey, is there any areas that we're lacking in or any areas that we can maybe we need a little bit more coverage or better coverage right. or different. You know, you talked about umbrellas. We added a, a personal umbrella too. Uh, including business because uh, that's the thing if you've got that hockey stick type growth I mean it can really take off pretty quickly on you and, and if you don't got those processes nailed down and and again you're finding good properties and you're just moving on to the next property then you know like you said things things can slip and you're maybe not as efficient efficient as you could be and so it's always good to kind of just let's you know, let's take a pause let's let's recollect and uh, you know make sure we're doing everything as, as best we can no doubt so do you have I mean do you know you know did you look back at the properties and say hey these are the next ones that if you know, if we get the right offer or, or we get the right environment or you know we want to get some more cash in our pocket are these uh, do you have targeted properties that you might sell or, or how, how does that look right now for you 
not really any nope. that we're we're looking to sell. Mm -hmm. We kind of did that. There's some that you got we, rid of a couple that you were we got rid of a couple mm -hmm. that would that maybe where there was some capex that was coming sure. up and and uh, maybe made sense to sell, but not that much into selling. Okay. Good. As I was saying, we're not really that. We're still into buying. Actually, mm -hmm. we uh, we had talked about slowing down a little bit and just put in another offer on a house <laughs> yesterday. We do that pretty frequently, but it would have to be. A good deal, and so we absolutely have what, what you talked about. So we know what we're looking for. We have what our parameters are for what we consider a mm -hmm. deal. You know, I think up until up until COVID, you know, there were so many people talked about multi uh, right. multi family, multi family, multi family, and I still think there's opportunities. Um, I do think that they're very high priced at this point. Sure. Um, and, and then you saw in COVID, a lot of people mm -hmm. did not want to be in a multifamily setting. So as, as I said, we experienced quite a bit of appreciation with people you know, wanting to be in a single family sure. setting, especially if you're working from home, maybe having a home office set up. Single family is a little bit easier to do that. So that's, that's our focus is mostly single family. Mm -hmm. Um, and then something that would make sense, you know, from a rental standpoint. Sure. Have you looked at any of your rentals? Um, and we can talk about your, your camp or if you want, but have you looked at any of your rentals to be like Airbnb properties? Does it make sense for any of those to flip or? With, with Jessica's connections with Kimberly Clark, mm -hmm. and there's some other people who are doing it at a really high level mm -hmm. in our area with corporate housing, uh, yep. Airbnb type of stuff. I know that some people's business model, um, as I was saying before, you know, I, I liken real estate investing to an art and a science. Mm -hmm. There's multiple, you know, multiple ways to do yep. it. And uh, I do think Airbnb as part of our mix is something for like a vacation type house where we're actively looking for somewhere up north that we could use ourselves and sure. rent it out. Uh, you had mentioned we, we bought a camper. We're renting that out for different events. Uh, we, you know, we've got it on uh, online. Mm -hmm. Things that we could use too. So I, I do, you know, as... as uh, I also think you know, Air, with Airbnb, if something goes wrong, you know, you can have your uh, your Rolodex of people to right. call. But mm -hmm. um, there's, it has its advantages, it has its drawbacks too. You could definitely get more, um, and and I do think you get into the properties a little bit more, keeping them cleaned. Right. And, and uh, but from a management standpoint, uh, that might present its own set of challenges. So, but yeah, as you talk about the art or science, I mean, there's so many different ways that people can make a living in real estate. I mean, there, like I said, there's the Airbnb, there's the long-term buy and hold there's there's the flipping there, there's wholesaling so you know it's really i mean you find that niche that can work for you and and you know what your skill set kind of affords you to get into and and then again you, you just you just take that step probably and, and and you know you learn what you learn and and then you decide if that's where you want to stay you know stay focusing on or if you want to find another strategy to do it so yeah i think that's great some of the local investor groups i think there is there is like the local rias mm -hmm. i actually uh, as part of as part of my backdrop for my story went to some seminars paid a lot of money nice. uh, but I didn't they they weren't necessarily things that were working in our area sure. and so I, I do believe some of the real estate investor associations if you're a landlord mm -hmm. an apartment association I mean that's a cheap investment to be part of that um, to be able to ask questions hear other people's stories right. see what they've been up to too and then same thing at the at the RIAs and how people are doing stuff you know as far as getting started too. Um, your, your goals can change, but maybe focusing on something. Uh, we focused on rentals. Mm -hmm. We do flip properties. We have a couple flips going now too. Mm -hmm. Um, but figuring out what that mix is, and and for us, it's it's a lifestyle too. You know, we've we've worked the last couple of years at a really high level. I had mentioned we're hoping to to scale back a little bit. If uh, you know who Jim Rohn is, mm -hmm. um, he uh, he likens uh, some of the you know the metaphor of the seasons of life, and, sure. and uh, spent uh, had a couple of winters which were tough. <laughs> Spent a long time in spring planting the seeds, <laughs> sure. long time in summer watching out, uh, taking care of the crop, and, and for now it's a little bit of a harvest time. Right. Well, I, I think it, I think it's it's good to say. I mean, like I said, even though if you're in the the season where you're we're harvesting, there's still uh, deals that come up. You know, you, you you talk to people that may have a property that is not in their wheelhouse but might be in your wheelhouse, and again, it, it's important not to let those those good properties slip away. Huh? I had mentioned a couple of funny stories uh, driving past saw. A guy there with his trailer 
heaped up, looked exactly <laughs> like uh, some some problem tenants that had moved out, stopped in and said, hey, I'm interested in buying the house. And he was interested in selling wow. and uh, put the deal together the next day. <laughs> um, I've had a few situations like that. Like I said, the MLS, uh, mm -hmm. when we're looking for stuff, I always think of what would work for me. Sure. And I'm not afraid, you know, I'm not afraid to make a lower offer mm -hmm. and, and uh, try to word it, you know, right. that, uh, hey, might be a little bit lower than you're wanting to accept, mm -hmm. but uh, this is what I might be interested right. in for uh, but the the real estate investor associations great way to find deals multiple uh, deals that I've gotten through there and a few that I've sold have been through through that connection too um, so yeah you never know where the next deal is coming from even for yeah first time real estate investors I mean just you know even if you're just on the brink of starting tell everybody you know that hey I'm getting into real estate because again it's it, a number of stories that have come up that said yeah I was just talking to so and so and they decided they wanted to get out of their property and it was perfect fit for kind of what you know what I wanted to get into so a couple things come to mind when you talk about new investors I would say just uh, keep an eye out for your support structure uh, you know when you say hey I'm getting into real estate and you're not into real estate at all <laughs> a lot of people are like okay good luck with that yeah. <laughs> and you really you got to have thick skin and and it's it's not an easy business to to get started in mm -hmm. Uh, I think the saying is uh, attributed to Abe Lincoln. You know, he talks about if you're going to chop down a tree right. and you had eight hours, spend the first six sharpening your axe. Yep. And it's true. You know, a lot of people maybe spend the spend the whole eight hours sharpening. <laughs> so you, you need to take action, no doubt about it. But also. Uh, researching what you want to do, trying to get information, get information from from different sources, right. meet people like you. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, as far as going to the lender, you asked about did you ever have trouble financing to get started with? I did, and mm -hmm. one of the things I didn't want to do is go into the banker and show them. Right. Here's what I've got going on. Yep. But if you reframe it and think, you know, hey. Chad, I might not be able to finance this right away. Can you look at what I've got going on and, and then tell me how can I get right. there? Same right. thing with an insurance agent. I'd encourage people to you know, look at any insurance agent, but uh, independent ones, I'm a big fan of them. You know, sure. if you go to the Ford dealer, you're coming home with a Ford. <laughs> if you go to somebody, into, and, and there's lots of great, right. lots of great people, uh, lots of great companies independent you can really you know look around see what might be the best fit and and same thing with real estate see what's going to be the best fit the people i know that are the most dissatisfied or at least that i've heard of with rentals are the people that only have one sure. or only have two mm -hmm. if that one or two units if they're not paying or if they're giving you right. uh, you know giving you a hard time then you might not want to be involved in it same thing with what I said, we lean real heavy into doing the CapEx up front. The people I see running into problems with rentals are people that don't, you know, that, that their properties are in disrepair sure. and they're not working and, and then you really, you don't have a leg up. Right. You know, if everything's working correctly and the only thing is a payment issue, that's one thing. If the properties aren't working correctly or they're not in safe and, you know, tenable condition, you know, that's another. But uh, it's, it's uh, you know, if you want to be in wholesaling, you know, focusing on that, if you want to be in, uh, in rental, and, and you can, that can change, anybody's goals can change in the mix uh, as you go along, but. Um, How about, yeah, as comfortable as you're, you feel okay sharing like what I mean what was your long-term vision kind of when you're getting started and, yeah. and how was that kind of changed over the years it's a great question mm -hmm. I had no doubt I was gonna be a millionaire in very <laughs> short order all I got to do is start sending out mailers uh, you know nowadays if you're in foreclosure or going through a divorce or processing a eviction or something I'm sure you're getting a million mm -hmm. a million mail pieces um, that changed to kind of what we talked about the yeah. art and science right. now I, I uh, then I really wanted to lean to lean heavy into it now not as much I love being involved with my family I love being involved with my friends I've got uh, my folks are getting a little bit older and uh, spending time with them spending time with our daughter and my fiance uh, love doing that mm -hmm. getting up north but again with the art and science you can kind of custom tailor it I, I would say this if you have the expectation of of hitting it big in real estate be ready to to apply the time up front sure. some people find success and that's great mm -hmm. it really is um, but there's there's also with real estate there's there's challenges abound too sure. Um, we've, we've, uh, I haven't set my bar any lower, but I, I, you know, I, one thing I'm a big proponent of, I really believe our health is our wealth mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and also, you know, mental health, physical health. Yep. 
I, uh, I'm, I'm not, um, I don't have aspirations of having a Ferrari in my own island. <laughs> uh, I would much rather spend time fishing, yep. camping, uh, doing some relaxing. And, you know, one of the concepts as a real estate investor that's always stuck with me is the concept of the reoccurring income. Mm -hmm. When I was doing the landscape and lawn service, you know, when, when I was swinging the hammer doing uh, construction, uh, once you stop doing that work, the money right. stops. For the rentals, it's a slower burn, but uh, you know, we, with one and then two and then three, and all of a sudden, you know, there's more there's more checks in the mailbox. Mm -hmm. Once you're able to gain some of those uh, efficiencies of scale, that makes it easier. And then just just having you know the the experience over time. Um, so so we've our goal is to is to be about where we're at. You know, we we want to mm -hmm. we. We really want to take the time to, to be a family. You know, I want to yep. be the best. That's how I measure myself. Yep. The the best dad that I can be, the best son, the best friend. Um, you know, the, uh, how can I give to my community? Mm -hmm. And um, and yeah, that's that's good lead into. So so talk about NeighborWorks a little bit. How did you get involved there? And, and kind of what, uh, what what kind of things are going on with you guys right now? So NeighborWorks Green Bay, uh, an organization that's near and dear to my heart. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm on the board there. I'm on a couple couple of different committees. I had had them on my whiteboard. I actually lived in De Pere for a really long time. Sold my house in the good market. Uh, moved back around Manitowoc to Rivers area, which is where I'm from, for a little bit. Uh, house hacked again later in life, uh, and then rented it back out again. Uh, but had NeighborWorks on my board, and then I ended up doing some sales and business mastery training, and uh, met somebody that was also on the board, Emily, and uh, and she said, hey, you should you should sit in on a meeting. Mm -hmm. The uh, mission for NeighborWorks is that we solve housing challenges uh, and we build stronger communities, and a lot of the building stronger communities is through that that corridor of housing. Mm -hmm. So NeighborWorks America is the parent company. Uh, they call them shops, and there's there's uh, multiple shops. There's one in every state, also in uh, District of Columbia, and then in Puerto Rico. Uh, some of the bigger cities, uh, there's one that has uh, a men's homeless shelter, and that's that's their mission. That's mm -hmm. what they do. That was the uh, maybe the the void or the need in that market. Sure. Uh, NeighborWorks Green Bay. We're focused on. Um, we've got a portfolio of residential rentals. We've got a we've got a pretty big book of business. Actually, mm -hmm. we do housing counseling. Uh, so anything from just getting started. Uh, down payment assistance, home you know, home buying education, homeowner education, um, all the way to foreclosure prevention. Um, one thing that's again uh, near and dear to my heart as an investor, when I got started, when I was sending out the mailers, I would see people regularly that were in a distressed situation. You know this better than anybody. That uh, one of the first things anybody that's in a distressed situation should do is call your banker. Right. You know they're not going to bonk you over the head through the phone. Figure out where you're at. How many payments are you behind? What are the arrears? You know what are the options? Yep. Uh, but but secondly, you know they're. Uh, is there anything else that's available? Any state or local funding? Uh, any way to help you out? And, and again, NeighborWorks is at least a great place to get started, point you in the right direction. They have HUD certified counselors. Um, the uh, what got me really interested too was the residential rental portfolio. Mm -hmm. A lot of it's project-based uh, and voucher-based housing, okay. things that as a landlord I'm not necessarily able to do, and uh, just a, a great way to add value in the community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they've done some great renovation projects downtown Green Bay and, and kind of all throughout Green Bay and, uh, and surrounding areas. I mean, it's just amazing, again, being able to take some of these properties that um, were a little bit in disrepair and go in and, and just clean them up and, and really help that whole neighborhood kind of transform. They got another program called the Bridges Program, again, near and dear to my heart. They're taking high school students with instructors and getting them started in the trades industry. Oh, I would say to any of the listeners, you know, if, if you've got uh, family or friends that are younger getting started in their career, be a welder, be an electrician, mm -hmm. you know, get into construction. I just saw an ad, 30 to $40 an hour for, uh, for a lead construction construction job mm -hmm. you know I think the next six figure jobs are going to be in the trades because there's not as many people doing them right. so anyways this program the bridges program uh, cool program look it up uh, and and you know somebody of that age yeah. to be interested uh, there aren't as many opportunities like that and mm -hmm. so that's something cool that NeighborWorks is doing too yeah I think I mean again with the whole COVID thing I think it's going to change that mindset of you know what is higher education and what's needed and, and again I mean people can carve a path out and not have to, you know, spend, uh, come out of school with a bunch of debt. I, I, I think, again, they can set themselves up in a pretty good spot. Mm -hmm. To go for something specialty is great, but 
a forty thousand dollar degree in underwater basket weaving. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not. That's um, versus. But real estate investing. You know, I, we, I, I very much so look at that as as a career. Yep. And getting education on that, you know, I, I, uh, there's there's lots of ways to do it, but uh, you know, for us, it's it's absolutely yeah. uh, been able to replace re replace incomes and yeah. uh, something that we much enjoy. No, it's great. What, what about they used to have? Were they turning properties that were multifamily into single family homes to NeighborWorks? Is that still a program that they are offering, or is that is that no longer? I'm I'm uncertain yeah. if uh, the the main focus I think now is to continue to uh, expand. Our, our uh, housing counseling services, okay. uh, in addition to hopefully doing some development and uh, and and then continuing on with our okay. with our residential rental portfolio. I'm uncertain if they have that program still available. Yeah, I know. Uh, again, it's probably 10 years ago, but I know they had a bunch of multifamily homes that were initially single family turned into multifamily, and they were trying to you know really push people to get them back to that single family because we we recently did one again. Jessica, she she was flipping houses with with great success oh, beforehand. She had had a duplex in her portfolio that she deconverted into a oh, single nice. family and I didn't see it I didn't see it at all like why, why would you do that and ended up making <laughs> making um, a, a good profit on it by that's deconverting good. it that's good let's talk uh, can we talk about your uh, your multi is it an eight unit property yep. how, how did that come about and um, the, the eight unit was in Jessica's portfolio okay. and when when um, we've been together for three mm -hmm. years and uh, we uh, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Doing residential real estate? No <laughs> kidding. So am I. And uh, so anyway, she had it in her portfolio beforehand. When I heard 80 unit, uh, it's it's a pretty nice building. You oh. know, all vinyl windows, good roof. Um, oh. So it's uh, I, I like the multifamily space. Mm -hmm. The single family too. It works. It works well for us. Mm -hmm. You know, I believe the exit strategy on it is uh, is good. And um, like I said, I, I think. Um, I really believe people with a family, you know, it, uh, if you're going to work from home, it's mm -hmm. nice to have the extra space. Right. And um, so, yeah, we, we like single families. Yeah, great. Um, let's talk a little bit about your partners on the uh, on like the uh, accounting side. How, how did how did you get started with being able to kind of track the numbers and, and kind of, you know, get that all put together? And, and how has that evolved over the years for you? Uh, again, Jessica, I got to give her all the credit. Uh, so I, for many, many, many years, I was the shoebox guy for my accountant. <laughs> Luckily, had a really great accountant who it, it cost me, it cost uh -oh. me extra money to bring mm -hmm. the shoebox there. And it was tough because if you're out doing the work, then to keep track of it. But uh, as I got more rentals, then it really got you know I was using a, spread, a spreadsheet <laughs> for sure. Um, and and. Jessica's kind of the yin to my yang. Good. She's very organized. She uh, she's got a great eye, but uh, understands. She as as uh, someone that was born in France, she's been here for five or six years. She knows the tax code uh, better than I think most right. people. She knows small business better than most people. She's uh, very detail oriented and, and a rock star uh, with regard to the bookkeeping. So she works in conjunction. With with our accountant, which which as we were talking, um, you know, even a new investor or an investor now, you know, you don't have to be an accounting expert, but you really need to know enough to ask the smart questions, know enough, because if you don't, then you might miss out on an opportunity. Uh, so both of us, I would consider ourselves pretty sharp on on knowing what things, you know, knowing about uh, tax and accounting, sure. and then uh, working in conjunction with a good tax preparer. But it's yeah, it's, it's good to point out that yeah, don't don't let that hinder you if, if you're not you know super tight on the the accounting side you know there, there's experts out there they can help kind of pick up that slack for you and, and again it could be a shoebox for a couple of years, but uh, but again, it, it could be as easy as just a spreadsheet, and as long as you can just kind of track the numbers too. With talking about you know getting the education, you know when when some of my friends were were maybe going out, you know I was going to landlord summits or tax <laughs> seminars and things like that, and uh, pages and pages of notes to at least start to get the framework or the idea and the understanding, mm -hmm. and then you know putting that into action. Mm -hmm. How, how often are you um, uh, leaning on an, uh, an attorney or, or a lawyer? Have you guys had a lot of situations come up that you've had to you know, utilize uh, an expert on that side of the house? Not as often. I would say when we do, it would be more on the creative finance mm -hmm. side rather than, you know, uh, 
something sure. civil or, yeah. or uh, you know, we, we try to conduct ourselves in a way that usually doesn't lend itself to having any issues. Mm -hmm. Like I said, we're, uh, we've, in all my years, I've only had to process two evictions. Okay, usually, right. usually we're able to work something out or have a, a matter of fact conversation. And like I said, I, I try to err on the side of, you know, thinking that we're all people, mm -hmm. um, you know, for, uh, Again, with what we were saying, having a good real estate attorney or somebody that you could know or ask questions or it could be a small investment, you know, you say, oh, the attorney's time is this much, you know, but but uh, if they're able to give you that knowledge or help you through a situation could pay for itself right there. So I, I've got uh, two good good attorneys that uh, that help us out. And again, from, from doing some of the creative financing, which I think still is a good strategy, could be real applicable in our market today. Uh, just understanding, you know, different aspects of maybe a land contract or a note in a mortgage, and then recording it. Sure. Uh, what language, uh, what language to use, and things like that could be important. Mm -hmm. Good. And besides, you've got an electrician friend and a plumber friend. Correct? How many other contractors? Uh, do you have a database of people that you kind of can lean on for other types of projects, or? You feel pretty comfortable being able to tackle most most anything. When I first got started, mm -hmm. I was doing most of the work, mm -hmm. other than things that would be skilled trade, HVAC, uh, plumber, electrician, and uh, we'll still we'll, we are right now actually to push a project over the finish line uh, in the last year or so with COVID. It's been tricky to. Um, we were working on six houses at mm -hmm. once from Sheboygan, <laughs> Appleton, Manitowoc, Two Rivers, and Green Bay. It was a lot. It was a lot of running around. We do have a pretty good Rolodex. We got our core people. Like I said, one of my best friends is a plumber. I, I look forward to going to work with them, even if it's me doing some of the dirty work. Again, with what we talked about before, some people would argue swinging the hammer is not the best way to do it. Find somebody else to do it. Uh, I enjoy some of it. Uh, I don't enjoy, you know, manual labor to some degree, <laughs> but uh, but I enjoy some of it. And and like I said, I believe uh, I would consider myself somewhat of a what a somewhat of a property expert. And um, we've got, you know, we, we need to as well. Mm -hmm. We've got our core people that help us out on the rehab side of things. But then we've got our our uh, who might be a little bit more expensive, the 24 hour mm -hmm. people that would respond, plumber, electrician, sure. and then a backup for those guys too right. so when we are out of town or when that situation does arise uh, you know you've, you've got the people to call with again with with contractors you know I want to be the guy I just certainly don't want to be gouged either but <laughs> right, right. Uh, I'm not always looking for the bargain basement I want somebody that's going to do the work correctly somebody that's an expert in their area somebody that could you know challenge my thinking yep. too or, or you know I feel like I'm learning every single day somebody that could help me learn a little bit more or teach me something that I don't know um, so how, do you, I, how do you vet? How do you vet them out? Then is it uh, word of mouth or um... again with the funny stories? I've got a million <laughs> funny stories about uh, some of the real tricky parts have been uh, maybe just a handyman or general construction. <laughs> um, you know, when you get into something like plumbers, electricians, I've still met a couple uh, interesting characters, <laughs> um, but uh, it it does seem. Seeing their work, seeing their finished product, right. talking to people, uh, the RIA or the Apartment Association again is a great way to yeah. to get a referral. I lean heavy on, hey, this you know this guy was great, did a great job. Try to do my diligence. Maybe start with depending on what it is. You know, if it was maybe a general contractor that was going to do a whole sure. project, maybe I'd start smaller and let them do a, a portion of work, see how it went. You know, the main idea I try would try not to end acrimoniously. Uh, you know, <laughs> right, I, right. I um, try to let everybody save a little bit of face. But mm -hmm. doing it for a few years, I, I believe that I could quickly tell you know a, a reasonable contractor from from not one. Oh, that's good. Now, we've got a lot of stories. Let's talk about uh, how about nightmare tenant stories. Have you, have you had any issues where I mean, again, I know you try to keep good relationships, but sometimes things just go bad. <laughs> One thing we do find a lot, uh, pets, uh -huh. pets that, sure. uh, that aren't on the lease. So we, we've had, um, uh, my plumber again, one of my best friends, he, uh, w I got a million funny stories. <laughs> One time we went over to a house, the, uh, the whole house was full of people and there was a plumbing issue there. And uh, so I, I, I softened it up for them a little bit. I said, hey, there's a lot of people here. It's kind of a mess inside. They were inherited tenants. And uh, before I got there, the text message I got was, you owe me. <laughs> and uh, so, we, you know, we these again, we're, we're all people. I try to come from a place of humility. Um, again, with what we said, if you only have one or two units and somebody's got the place trashed, 
uh, that's harder to deal with yeah. when you get up to a few more then it's easier to just just kind of and I and I I don't take it lightly mm -hmm. I don't take it lightly at all but um, you know people are gonna be people you try yeah. to do the best that you can do up front when you're looking for tenants to try to attract um, the best caliber of tenant that you can. Uh, you know, we've definitely had some some difficult situations. We've had some pretty unbelievable situations. Um, but uh, generally speaking, you know, with doing our diligence uh, over the years, mm -hmm. we, we we have had some pretty some pretty good tenants too. Oh, that's good. So, uh, spinning over to kind of the, the the wrap up questions here, how important have mentors been for you in your journey uh, through the years? Extremely important. Mm -hmm. I, I had mentioned my dad uh, being a great entrepreneur. The one thing I would credit him, oh, a million things I would credit him with, but the you know as far as me not starting, he was very supportive of everything that I was up to mm -hmm. and, and encouraging, but never said, hey, you know, you need to start doing business for yourself. When I had thought about, uh, he he when he had all those gas stations, he ended up selling out to somebody else before Quick Trip got big in our area, <laughs> and which was great. The yep. foresight on that, who could imagine right. that? But many people asked me. You you know why? Why didn't you want to take that over? And it just it wasn't it wasn't uh, what I wanted to do. And mm -hmm. so he he's been a brilliant mentor. Uh, my mom, great lady too. She uh, she was an entrepreneur too. She had a quilt store. Uh, so those were as far as mentors go. You know, uh, hung the moon. In my own journey of personal development, um, a, uh, some people like Jim Rohn mm -hmm. sticks out to me. Sure. I love uh, Tony Robbins just for, for motivational or, sure, or yep. character development. And then just listening online to people, uh, again, some of the re meetings, seeing who they're listening to. But I, I enjoy reading. I enjoy continuing to educate myself. And uh, so those would be some of the best, though. I think getting the principles for real estate investing, mm -hmm. that's something really important. Right. But the the, uh, the mental side of it, the personal development side mm -hmm. of it, uh, for life in general, are some are some really key ingredients. Yeah. yeah. I mean, again, to get the rich dad, poor dad book, but then you know, if, if he would have said, hey, this is kind of the path to take, like it, it, you might have you might have taken it different. And, and that's the thing, like everybody's got to find their own journey and find their own way. And, totally. and people can put, you know, kind of put those things in your path. But, you know, it's kind of going to be up to your, you know, the, each individual person to kind of take what what they got there and, and really make it what it needs to be. So the, the second book, too, I, I always tell everybody this, if you read the Rich Dad, <laughs> Poor Dad book, it's a lot of storytelling. The second one, the cash flow quadrant, oh, yeah. that's really what mm -hmm. puts it all together. Mm -hmm. No, definitely. What about, uh, you talked about um, Tony Robbins, Jim Rohn, any other podcasts or anything that, that you listen to or um, I guess other books that, that you want to recommend people maybe check out? I've been interested in in uh, in the stock market a little mm -hmm. bit lately. Doing the real estate investing has afforded me time. Mm -hmm. I'm always interested in other streams of income. We've got uh, some laundry. We've got some laundry units for another oh, stream nice. of income. Um, not a podcast, uh, <laughs> but uh, an interesting guy. I think Lacey Hunt. He's a macroeconomist. If you've uh, never heard of him, I would check him out. He's Great. got some really really good information. Uh, there's a ton of good podcasts, yep. including this one, and you know, taking the time. I, I do listen to music sometimes, but I also love listening to podcasts. Yep. Love getting additional information as the market changes, as things change. Uh, I'm learning stuff all the time. Um, yeah, what, I mean, again, what time to be alive? Because to, to be able, I mean, any niche you want to go after, you know, again, there's probably a podcast out there somewhere to. To check out and and, and in uh, along that corridor really figuring out what do you want to get out mm -hmm. of it if you want to make real estate investing your career then it, it, focus on that and and uh, be ready for you know a, a great lifestyle too but there's a lot of work that goes into it but if if you're looking to maybe offset some of your taxable you know some of your some of your tax liability just by having a couple of properties or supplementing your income there's a way to do that mm -hmm. too uh, Jessica and I, we've made it somewhat of our lifestyle, but but uh, also providing plenty of time for family and yeah. leisure and things like that. So oh, that's great. How important is branding in the overall scope of your success or your business? Again, when I first started out, I would have thought it was way more important. Mm -hmm. And and again, it just depends on what you want to do. For us, it's not as important as mm -hmm. far as an actual brand, uh, our own reputation, us as people. Yeah. That's that's really important to us, um, and then and then again, you know, uh, how we're conducting ourselves, mm -hmm. how we're acting in the community, how you know I would measure myself. Like I said, how would my family? What kind of what kind of brother? What kind of son? What kind of friend? 
Um, those are the key ingredients for us. So I, I do think that a brand is, is important for some. Um, and, and for us, I would say, like I said, our, our reputation and the way that we're conducting ourselves is uh, equally and more important for us. Yeah, I mean, I like that question because, again, everybody's kind of got their own level of, of what branding is, how important it is, what, you know, but, uh, but again, like you said, at the end of the day, if you're doing good and you're being good, like, you know, that, that, that goes a long way uh, for, for po folks. And, and again, the word's going to spread about you. No doubt. Uh, any last words of wisdom you'd like to share with, uh, with our audience? I, again, from the real estate investing, just maintaining integrity with yourself. Um, it, it, uh, it's, been, it's been a lot of work. It's been interesting. The seasons of life uh, that Jim Rohn likens it to, you know, any aspects of, of what you're doing, whether that's a career um, or, or whatever. I, I love real estate investing. Uh, like I said, I'll talk to anybody about it, and, and for us, it's really it's it's been uh, it's been interesting. It's been fun. It's been over the time as I've adjusted what we're doing. It's turned out now to be exactly what I hoped that it would sure. be. The uh, streams of reoccurring income. Uh, each day I get up and I get to do not always what I want, but it's it's uh, it's what I'm choosing to do. And if I want to take the day off, spend the day with my family and friends. I do it regularly, yeah. and um, so again, I I would encourage anybody if you're just getting started, uh, spend the six hours sharpening your saw, really uh, sh uh, sharpening your axe. Get get the information. Um, look to other people that are doing it better than you are, and um, yeah, coming from a place of humility, you know, from from a from a rental uh, from a rental standpoint, mm -hmm. coming from a. a, a an extreme place of humility and understanding that we're all people. Yep. How can you add value to somebody else's life? And, and uh, that'll over time, you know, over the course of time and the law of averages doing the right thing that uh, that should equate to a good lifestyle for yeah. yourself. No, that's great. What, what's, what is the best place for people to, to find you or reach, reach out to you? <laughs> I'm not really on social media. Uh, I really don't. Uh, you could find me at a real estate investor group. Um, in NeighborWorks, there's tons of great ways to get involved. Um, like I said, I'm on the board in some committees, but we also do, there's an event coming up called Good Neighbor Week. Check that out. Uh, what we do is we're looking out in the community at people that might need some type of service, um, and, and that could be something interior or exterior, repairs that might need to be done. So you could participate on doing the repairs. You could be somebody receiving those goods and services, those repairs. You could give, uh, you know, give either of your time, or you could, uh, you know, you could, you could sponsor a portion of it. So you could uh, you could check me out at NeighborWorks. That'd be a great place. That, that's great. Well, again, I, I think this was a great uh, discussion. I appreciate you sharing your story a little bit. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for coming in. Appreciate you having me, Chad. And thanks for watching. Please uh, like, subscribe. Uh, again, we, we, we really appreciate you checking these things out. Have a great day.